Today we're going to be checking out the top 20 biggest and most anticipated games releasing in the second half of 2022 for Xbox and PlayStation. Now this is my list, my opinion, and I'm sure some of you will have very different choices. So if you think I've missed something or have any questions, just hit me up in the comments below. Also, keep in mind the games industry is constantly changing, especially with the effects of COVID in recent years, so all release dates, official or otherwise, should be taken lightly and not as a definitive set in stone date. And we could always get some surprise at game announcements that end up coming sooner than expected. You never know. So first off, at number one, we have Madison. A psychological first-person horror game combining two different worlds where only one can be viewed momentarily through the lens of a Polaroid camera. Taking pictures with said camera gives you a glimpse into an ultimate so-called beyond world where certain environmental aspects may have changed, helping you solve puzzles, escape from otherworldly creatures, and just generally helping you stay alive. The story of Madison is essentially you waking up in a dark room, your hands covered in blood, only later to find out that you're part of a gruesome ritual that began many decades decades ago that you're forced to take part in until you complete the ritual or death, whatever comes first. Madison was released on July the 8th for PlayStation 5, Xbox Series X and S, PlayStation 4 and Xbox One. At number two we have Stray, a game in which you play as a cat exploring a cyberpunk dystopian world where the only lifelike beings that remain to interact with are robots. The journey, however, will be riddled with numerous tasks in the form of puzzles, exploration, and hostile encounters along the way. Stray was released on the 19th of July for PlayStation 5 and PlayStation 4. At number 3 we have Bright Memory Infinite. The initial Bright Memory game was released on Steam at the start of 2019 by a single developer in his spare time, believe it or not. After receiving a ton of positive feedback, the game was later expanded to include a full-length story, more in-depth gameplay mechanics, and renamed to Bright Memory Infinite. The game focuses on extremely fast-paced first-person shooting while dabbling a little in melee combat and unlockable abilities. Bright Memory Infinite released on the PS5 and Xbox Series X on July the 21st this year, after initially being slated for a 2021 release. At number 4 we have Themesia. Themesia is described by the developers as a Souls-like action RPG where the plague is your weapon. The game comes across as being extremely fast-paced with a high emphasis on dodging and finding the exact right moment to engage on your enemies. So far the developers have been very open about the progress of the game and a number of YouTube videos can be found on their channel going in-depth into some of the unique mechanics they've implemented. Themesia was originally set to release on the 9th of August this year, but after a recent delay, it is now going to be coming out on the 18th of August. So not really that much of a delay, just a week and a half, and that's going to be coming out for PlayStation 5 and Xbox Series X and S. At number 5 we have Saints Row. Saints Row has been completely rebooted with a new setting, new tone, and just a general graphical upgrade to bring the franchise up to date with today's games. It starts in traditional Saints Row fashion with a pretty detailed character creator, after which you're launched into a deserty Las Vegas-esque world as a soon-to-be crime lord. Over-the-top destruction and downright goofiness is what Saints Row is known for and it seems like this reboot will be no different. From blowing up helicopters with bazookas to prancing around in your underwear, this Saints Row reboot is returning to the things that made the franchise great and is shaping up to be something fans of the series will really enjoy. Saints Row comes out on the 23rd of August for PlayStation 5, Xbox Series X and S, PlayStation 4 and Xbox One. At number 6 we have Lord of the Rings at Gollum. In a time where purely stealth based games are few and far between, Lord of the Rings Gollum comes at a pretty perfect time. Although it's based within the Lord of the Rings universe, it has seemingly very little to do with the story of the film franchise. The game puts you in the shoes of Gollum, a creature of Middle Earth fairly well known to most of you at this point, who struggles with a split personality all the while constantly searching for his one and only Remaining unseen and sneaking between the monsters of Middle-earth is essentially the whole idea here, combat of any kind being seemingly completely absent from the game. I'm still undecided on how I feel about the quality of the game due to the recent gameplay snippets we've seen, however games based in the Lord of the Rings universe seem to gain a fair amount of attention purely due to the popularity of the franchise, so fingers crossed the final stages of development go smoothly and we get something fans of the Lord of the Rings can really gel with. The Lord of the Rings Golem was unfortunately recently delayed and is no longer going to be releasing on the 1st of September. The devs mentioned that it was going to release a few months later, so if that's December or January, I guess that's anyone's guess at this point, but just so you know, this might potentially not really be a 2022 game anymore. We'll have to wait and see. But that's coming out for PlayStation 5, Xbox Series X and S, PlayStation 4 and Xbox One. At number 7 we have The Last of Us Remake. 
The Last of Us was the second highest rated game in 2013 right behind Grand Theft Auto V and in many people's eyes is one of the best games of all time. So naturally the announcement for this remake was very well received. Shortly after the announcement, Naughty Dog revealed some higher quality before and after photos, comparing the 2013 title with its new and improved counterpart, and even though the original holds up fairly well for a nearly 10 year old game, the differences in my opinion in the level of detail are actually quite noticeable. Needless to say, I think fans and newcomers alike will appreciate the work that's been put into this masterpiece. The Last of Us Remake comes out on the 2nd of September for PlayStation 5. So up at number 6 we have Steel Rising. Set in a futuristic French revolution, you play as Aegis, a female automaton bodyguard for the queen that needs to find her creator in order to end the massacres carried out by King Louis XVI. Described as an action RPG, the game seems like it plays out like any other Souls-like, challenging encounters, unlockable skills, and I guess a focus on close range combat. The snippets of gameplay we've seen so far look fun and engaging, but in my personal opinion, it doesn't really give off a next gen feeling. The environment often lacks a little bit of detail and character. Now I want to make this clear that it is only video footage that we can judge for the time being, but in the footage we've seen, oftentimes it seems like it struggles to hit 60 frames. Still an interesting setting and maybe worth a look if you find yourself with a little bit of spare time. Still Rising will be coming to PlayStation 5 and Xbox Series X and S on September the 8th. At number 9 we have Warhammer 40k Dark Tide. Dark Tide is the newest addition to the Warhammer 40k universe and it comes in the form of a first person shooter. Playing with up to 4 players you go up against periodic waves of AI controlled enemies as you progress through the main story. Multiple missions and side objectives will take place in the same area before moving on to the next with the option to craft, purchase or upgrade weapons in between combat. The game does implement a live service-esque model as the plot is set to evolve over time as new content is introduced to the game. I just hope it comes in the form of tasteful DLC rather than a constant push of like smaller purchasable items with some sort of exclusivity tag tied to them. Warhammer 40k Dark Tide will be coming to Xbox Series X and S on September the 13th. At number 10 we have Evil West. Trigger Happy Cowboys and Daunting Vampires aren't exactly a likely combination when considering the possibilities of a new third person action shooter, but that's exactly what the developers of Flying Wild Hog have gone with. The developers recently dropped an extended gameplay trailer which highlights pretty well what the full game will play out like on launch. The gunplay looks fast and snappy, the progression system seems to be more than just plus one to this stat, and the audio cues are constantly letting you know what you should pay attention to. This is still only a first look and we will no doubtedly get a better idea of how the game plays out on release, but at the moment it's definitely left a lasting impression. Evil West is set to release on the 20th of September for PlayStation 5, Xbox Series X and S, PlayStation 4 and Xbox One. At number 11 we have Marvel's Midnight Suns. From the developers of the legendary XCOM 1 and 2 comes Marvel's Midnight Suns. Similarly to the XCOM games, this one also focuses on tactical turn-based strategy, but as you may have guessed, it's based around all the members and villains in the MCU. Basing the game on the MCU is a great way of bringing immediate attention to it, however the initial response from fans after finding out about a new card system wasn't great. All abilities within the game, instead of attached to a cooldown, will only be playable when playing that specific ability card. The available cards for any given encounter are to be chosen by the player before the battle commences. This does add another layer of micromanagement to the game that their previous XCOM titles didn't incorporate, but the jury is still out on whether it was the right decision or not. Personally, I think the game looks fantastic and adding a card system allows the developers to give any character a much wider range of movesets without anything becoming too unbalanced. Also, as a side note, this is going to be an enormous game with the main campaign being over 100 hours, as mentioned in a developer interview. Marvel's Midnight Suns releases on the 7th of October for PlayStation 5, Xbox Series X and S, PlayStation 4 and Xbox One. At number 12, we have A Plague Tale Requiem. The prequel, A Plague Tale Innocence, went mostly unnoticed upon its initial launch in 2019, but over time really gained some love from the gaming community. An original story based in a period of war between England and France, it follows the path of a French teen and her younger brother as they struggle to survive, remaining unnoticed. Hugo, the younger brother, finds out he has the power to control rats, and the game essentially becomes a game of cat and mouse, using dark areas to remain unnoticed, and striking with the rats when the opportunity presents itself. A Plague Tale Requiem, picking up shortly after the events of the first game, essentially seems like more of the same, but better. The kids have now grown older and are not afraid to do what it takes to stay alive. Amicia is now equipped with a crossbow, and although it's still focused predominantly on stealth, 
It seems there will be more opportunities to take out the enemy when necessary. A Plague Tale Requiem comes out on the 18th of October for PlayStation 5 and Xbox Series X and S. At number 13 we have Scorn, a cinematic survival horror adventure game from Ebb Software. Although a fair amount of footage has been shown, we still have very little idea on what the story is actually about. At the start of the game, you wake into a world riddled with biomechanical machines buried deep within the ruins of an extinct industrial civilization. And in terms of story, that's about as much as we have to go off. Puzzles and small amounts of combat will be present, but I think the biggest part of the game will be analyzing and problem solving your way through this gruesome and detailed environment. I think this game will be more about the experience of making your way through the world rather than any challenging tasks that require skill or timing to overcome. Scorn releases on the 21st of October for the Xbox Series X and S and Xbox One. At number 14 we have High on Life. This is a game from Squanch Games and Justin Rowland, the creative mind behind the hit series Rick and Morty. Basically, you're an intergalactic bounty hunter equipped with talking guns on a mission to take down an alien cartel looking to get high off the life force of humanity. The game honestly looks pretty good and much less of a side project than I thought it was going to be. If you're not a fan of the Rick and Morty humor, then this game might not 100% be for you because I don't really think you're getting away from the Rick and Morty quirkiness that this game wears on its sleeve. However, if you do enjoy that type of humor and you're interested in something that doesn't take itself too seriously, then this might very well be a sneaky hit of 2022. High on Life drops on the 25th of October for the series X and S and Xbox One. At number 15, we have Gotham Knights. Gotham Knights is the big one this year from Warner Brothers Games. Based around the supporting cast from Batman, namely Nightwing, Batgirl, Robin, and Red Hood, it starts off shortly after the alleged death of Batman himself. While investigating Batman's disappearance, the heroes come into a conflict with a society not mentioned too often in Batman games, the Court of Owls. Each character is playable and equipped with their own unique abilities and playstyle, and while they can only be played one at a time, co-op options that allow a second player to drop in or out at practically any time are available as well. Based on the gameplay we've seen so far, each of the characters look like they play very differently and even have their own type of traversal mechanic, letting them cross Gotham City with ease. Which, in a game claiming it's the biggest visualization of Gotham City to date, will be pretty necessary. Game looks great, the feedback from fans has been pretty good for the most part. As far as I can tell, there won't be anything revolutionary about the game, but it'll just be a whole lot of fun. Gotham Knights is set to release on the 25th of October for PlayStation 5 and Xbox Series X and S. At number 16 we have Call of Duty Modern Warfare 2. Yes, that's right, another year, another Call of Duty. The single player campaign picks up three years after the conclusion of the 2019 title Modern Warfare. John Price has now fully formed Task Force 141, which are operating all over the world, from Europe to the United States to the deserts of the Middle East, all of which will be experienceable throughout the course of the campaign. The developers Infinity Ward are boasting new water physics, which were on show to see in the initial gameplay trailer, as well as overhauled vehicle and attachment systems. Multiplayer is said to add several new game modes, two of which are called Knockout, where two teams attempt to capture a package with limited lives, and Prisoner Rescue, where an attacking team attempts to rescue a hostage and the defending team, well, defends. Who am I kidding? This is Call of Duty's 19th main installment, and the formula is pretty well known at this point. Either you like it, or it's not for you. Call of Duty Modern Warfare 2 will be releasing on the 28th of October for PlayStation 5, Xbox Series X and X, PlayStation 4, and Xbox One. At number 17, we have Skull and Bones. I was initially skeptical about putting this on a single player games list, however, after the recent gameplay reveal, I'm convinced that the game can actually be experienced as a single player adventure. It might be lacking in some storytelling, but for the right audience that just want to sail the seas and look for treasure, there's definitely some fun to be had. I guess the most comparable game is Sea of Thieves, and Skull and Bones goes for a more realistic art style and maybe focuses more on ship combat rather than exploring on foot, but for the most part these games seem pretty comparable. Most of your time will be spent on your ship as you complete contracts, explore the open seas, hunting for treasure, undergoing investigations, farming resources and participating in dynamic events, all of which will increase your so-called infamy. Infamy is comparable to experience in a way. More infamy means better upgrades for your ship and different cosmetics for your pirate. This game isn't going to be for everyone, but for those looking for their pirate fix, it might be worth a look. Skull and Bones comes out on the 8th of November for PlayStation 5 and Xbox Series X and S. At number 18, we have God of War Ragnarok. 
This is probably the most anticipated game of the year for a lot of people, and for good reason. The prequel from 2018 reinvigorated the series after five years hiatus since the last main installment. A perfect blend of interesting, replayable world design, beautiful art direction, a redesigned combat system all accompanied by a compelling story, launched God of War to the top of the PlayStation 4 charts, obtaining the highest Metacritic score for a PlayStation 4 exclusive. God of War Ragnarok has big shoes to fill, but if the information we've received so far is anything to go by, it could be a worthy Game of the Year contender, taking place three years after the events of the previous game. But to keep it vague because I don't want to spoil anything, Kratos and his now teenage son Atreus continue the story from where it left off. Many familiar faces from the first game are known to make a return, and even though the skill progression and unlockables in the first game seem to hit the sweet spot, I hope the developers get a bit more creative with the skills this time in order to make it feel fresh, especially now that Atreus is older and should prove to be more of a force to be reckoned with rather than just a helpful companion. High hopes God of War Ragnarok can hit the high expectations when it drops on the 9th of November for PlayStation 5 and PlayStation 4. At number 19 we have the Dark Pictures Anthology The Devil In Me. The Dark Pictures Anthology is a long ongoing survival horror series currently set to have 8 stories planned, 3 of which are out. The Devil In Me being the 4th and labelled the finale of the season, is centered around a group of documentary filmmakers that receive a mysterious call inviting them to a modern day replica of serial killer H.H. H. Holmes's murder castle. None of the stories in the Dark Pictures anthology are connected and therefore can actually be played in any order that you wish. Those of you familiar with the developer Supermassive Games will have a general idea on how these games go. They are more interactive dramas, I guess, sometimes referred to as walking simulators, where the player decides which direction the story goes based on the decisions made. And again, this game is aimed at a very specific audience, but if you're into those interactable movie type of experiences, then the Dark Pictures Anthology is going to be a good place to start. Supermassive Games have been doing these sorts of games for a while now, and they've sort of become masters of the craft. The Devil in Me comes out sometime in autumn for PlayStation 5, Xbox Series X and S, PlayStation 4, and Xbox One. Finally, at number 20, we have The Callisto Protocol. The Callisto Protocol is essentially the spiritual successor to Dead Space. Grounded somewhat in reality, it takes place in 2320 at a prison colony called Black Iron on Jupiter's moon Callisto. The player assumes the role of prisoner Jacob Lee, finding themselves in the midst of an alien invasion that appears to have been engineered by the prisoner's warden. The game has a very familiar dark and creepy feel about it when comparing it to the likes of Dead Space and has even incorporated a similar lifeline indicator on the back of the protagonist that can be seen due to the third person view. Which makes sense because Glenn Schofield, the curator of Dead Space, is leading the project. The team has gone on record saying the game is going to be much gorier though. They've even built a separate gore engine to make deaths in the game look as horrific as possible. Suffice to say, it's not for the faint hearted, just so you know what you're getting into. In the gameplay we've seen so far, there are also moments where the player is using some form of supernatural abilities, a mechanic not often explored in survival horror games. All in all, I'm sure fans of Dead Space will greatly enjoy this fresh but familiar take with a completely new story and setting. The Callisto Protocol comes out at the end of the year on the 2nd of December for PlayStation 5, Xbox Series X and X, PlayStation 4 and Xbox One. So some games are slated for a 2022 release but haven't received a definitive date yet. In my experience, these are the games that are generally more susceptible to being pushed back, potentially even to 2023, so take this list for what it is. So first on the bonus list is Hogwarts Legacy, pretty much the game that all Harry Potter fanatics have been wishing for. After the initial trailer, it seemed a little bit too good to be true, and these days, sometimes the first cinematic trailer can be a little bit deceiving and not really represent what the final game will look like. However, after seeing a lot more actual gameplay for the game, it seems like this game might actually exceed expectations. The scope of this game is massive, with deep customization, a unique combat style, and vast open world far beyond the walls of Hogwarts itself. The gameplay was truly a spectacle when it was shown back in March. It's still slated for a 2022 release, but no official release date has yet been announced. Currently, Hogwarts Legacy is still supporting old gen consoles and will be coming out on the PlayStation 5, Xbox Series X and S, PlayStation 4 and Xbox One. The second bonus is Asterigos Curse of the Stars. This cartoony looking action RPG inspired by a combination of Greek and Roman mythology looks, in my opinion, very reminiscent of Ubisoft's Immortals Phoenix Rising. 
The gameplay does look fairly simple, and although the scope of the game might not be as big as Immortals Phoenix Rising, it definitely looks like a fun little game to act, maybe more as a palette cleanser. I just hope the price is also set accordingly. The release window is currently set for Autumn 2022 for PlayStation 5, Xbox Series X and S, PlayStation 4 and Xbox One. At number 3 on the bonus list we've got System Shock a game that was initially released in 1994 for PC, so as you would imagine, these days it's a little rough around the edges. This is a remake of the game, giving it a fresh coat of paint while still keeping the story and gameplay style intact, not to take away from what made the original memorable. No official release date has yet been announced, but it's apparently still on track for 2022. The game will release on PlayStation 5, Xbox Series X and S, PlayStation 4 and Xbox One. At number 4 on the bonus list, we've got Sonic Frontiers. After a rough initial review, which received very mixed opinions from fans, Sonic Frontiers has been consistently trickling out more and more information over the past couple of months. I think a combination of conflicting art styles and the very jarring look of floating rails scattered throughout the environment maybe gives this Sonic adventure a bad first impression. Many people that had early access to the build claimed that it probably won't be the next big thing for the franchise, but it'll still be a fun Sonic experience. It should also be noted that some traditional cyberspace levels are also included in the game, but how they get incorporated into the storyline and open world is still unknown. Sonic Frontiers is still slated for a 2022 release, and the latest Steam database had Sonic Frontiers down for a December 3rd release. So take that date for what it is. Sonic Frontiers will be released on the PlayStation 5, Xbox Series X and S, PlayStation 4, and Xbox One. At number 5 on the bonus list, we have The Chant. This is another purely story-driven horror survival game with little to no combat or challenging obstacles. Think Supermassive Games-esque. Some of the facial animations are maybe lacking a little bit of polish and the environment lacks a bit of detail, but it is the studio's first project and by the sounds of it, the storyline is very intriguing. The Chant releases sometime in 2022 for PlayStation 5 and Xbox Series X and S. Old gen consoles might not be supported as they weren't shown in the initial reveal trailer, but besides that, no official statement for old gen support has actually been made yet. At number 6 on the bonus list we've got Need for Speed. Little is known about Criterion Games' new Need for Speed game, however there were rumours specifically from Tom Henderson, a well known insider, about it releasing possibly on the 4th of November. If this is the case we should hear more about it very soon. Release date and supported platforms are still completely unknown as the game hasn't even been officially announced yet. At number 7 on the bonus list we've got Avatar Frontiers of Pandora. Up until a week ago, this game was still expected sometime in 2022, but after an official report from Ubisoft has been delayed until the fiscal year 2023-2024. Now this is a very fresh delay, it didn't happen too long ago, so I just wanted to include it in the bonus list just in case some of you were still expecting it in 2022. At number 8 on the bonus list we've got Atomic Heart. The war in Ukraine has been pretty hard on a number of different game studios, one of which being Moonfish the developers of Atomic Heart. Although no official statement has been made to move the game from 2022, rumors suggest that they are now looking at an early 2023 release date. Atomic Heart will release on PlayStation 5, Xbox Series X and S, PlayStation 4 and Xbox One. At number nine, we've got a smaller game, Inscription. An interesting roguelike deck building game initially released for PC in 2021 and now coming to PlayStation. I've personally never played the game, but there are two things that I constantly hear about it. It's a great game, especially if you're into roguelites. And number two, don't look up anything about the game before playing it to prevent any spoilers. So I think I'm going to leave that there. And if deck building in roguelites is something that you're into, then go for it. Inscription would be playable on both the PlayStation 4 and PlayStation 5. At number 10 on the bonus list, we've got Grounded. This survival exploration game by Obsidian was an immediate hit when it was released into early access back in July 2020. The game has received countless updates and received tons of feedback from fans over the last two years and is set to finally get an official release with a complete storyline in September this year. I personally played through the story in early access when it came out and I can honestly say I had a blast. I do highly recommend it if you're into any sort of survival games. The complete grounded experience, as mentioned earlier, is coming out in September this year for Xbox Series X and S and Xbox One. And finally, last on the bonus list, we have Pentiment, a narrative-driven adventure role-playing game set in Bavaria in the 16th century with a very divisive art style. 
By that, I mean the game is in 2D with fairly stiff animations and the information is delivered in the form of parchment text bubbles. The game is all about the story though and the decisions you make while investigating the murder of a prominent person over a time span of around 25 years. Like I mentioned, very divisive, most likely a big hit or a miss for most people. Pentiment is scheduled to release sometime in November this year for Xbox Series X and S and Xbox One. So that's about it. We have a lot of games to look forward to coming in the second half of 2022. If you have any questions or think I missed some big Xbox or PlayStation releases, just let me know in the comments below. It's more than likely there's some things I have missed. If anyone's interested in checking out the entire list for the newest games coming out, I've got a Google spreadsheet linked in the description below. All the big new games for Xbox and PlayStation are listed in chronicle order on that list. Apart from that guys, have a good day and I'll catch you in the next one. See you later.